good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're very lucky to have with us this afternoon a young producer who I think is kind of spearheading a new wave of experimentalism in hip hop production these days. Uh, he's done work with Lil B, Soldier Boy, ASAP Rocky, Mac Miller, and has also put out some instrumental stuff on labels like Triangle and Type. Everybody give it up for Clams Casino. Hey, thanks for having me. So yeah, I guess just tell us a little, for those who might not know, about your background, your upbringing. Um, well, I started making beats like, just for fun about like 10 years ago. I was a freshman in high school. Um, I was about like 14 years old, I think, and uh, I didn't really try to start getting my music out there like heard or trying to work with artists or anything or rappers till like probably um I think like four years ago, like the end of 2007 is when I started like, you know, going online. I would go on MySpace and uh, just send messages out to rappers and anybody I wanted to work with, you know, um, see if I could send them beats and stuff. So um, I, I was doing it for a long time, just like on my own, just like, you know, show my friends and listen to myself. But, you know, I, just, I started about four years ago to actually trying to get it out. Now, I guess even before you were pushing your beats that way, what do you think it was that drew you to even make music on that level? Um, just something I always like to do. I mean, I, like growing up, I played drums and stuff, and I always played instruments. I mess around with a lot of instruments, but um, I started listening to hip hop mostly. I was like, I guess like 12. I started listening to like, and then I was like only listening to hip hop. So kind of from there, it's like that's all I was into. And then I I kind of just started, you know, I bought like some some little hardware, some samplers and stuff, and um, just started messing around with that because that was like really what I was into. Now tell us a little about some of the hip hop you were listening to back then. Um, when I first started, like when I was in high school, I was listening to like mostly like Mob Deep, like Prodigy, um, like uh, mostly that, Wu-Tang a lot, mostly like just like uh, a lot of like, you know, New York stuff, like just, you know, pretty hardcore, hardcore gangster rap. No, I mean, you don't seem like a hardcore dude. What drew you <laughs> to that sort of stuff? I, I don't know. I think it's the beats really like, you know, like... Um, I would say it's definitely for Wu-Tang, definitely the beats, because like I wouldn't even know. I had no idea what they were talking about. So but I just like I just like the music. I just like the beats a lot. So I would say that's mostly what it was. Maybe we should play uh this prodigy record to give people a feel of what it was you were listening to at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um this is uh Genesis by Prodigy. Um this is like one of my favorite songs and right around the time when I started making beats this is what I was listening to. Respect this right here, nigga. I am D. You must play this. I am D. Word up. Yeah, no. Infamous small D. It's real. Say it out, though. Respect the I am D. Fresh out the car in the R A double P. E R P E double. When I speak, it gets real. Flakes try to tell me you're done, not nah, chill. You can't come out wildin' out like that. Rhyme so vivid, then I see what you're saying. But you gotta understand how I feel. The pain and the hardship it took to build. Years of frustration, some got killed. Others fell victim to the gates of steel. Most try to instill sanity still. Stuck on this rock where we don't belong. I wanna go home, not sing this song. But I'm forced to perform speech napalm. Napalm, surrounded by all types of harm. Dog man, fuck your screw face, I watch hands. Watch hands, nigga. I see that. I 
watched by snake eyes. Peeped them chest, getting plenty time. Surrounded by crash dummies and empty minds. Get your shit together, done. See between the lines. Stay awoke to the ways of the wickedest kind. Infamous, cause of the way I write rhymes. Plus, my story's more foul than your newborn eating swine. Catch a seat, it's about to get deep. Like squeezing fluoride on your brush for your teeth. Or taking your seat to get shots every week. We need to pay more attention to our surroundings. Busy wilding, all for the wrong cause. Put that same strength in the song that'll pay off. Don't forget your soul's involved. That same energy you put out comes right back and revolves. I smash you, done only if I have to. I would hate to, but I'll be more than glad to. The positive and negative war has now begun. P helps you separate both the sides. Let the truth arise. Black devil don't hide. He can't hide from me. He might from the others. I've been employed to pull your ass out from the covers. You walk like you got hooves and talk like you're supposed to. Tricking my brothers into following you. Yo, potential energy is easily made kinetic. I turn them all back where they belong. Don't wet it. What said it? What said it, nigga? Fucking fake ass motherfuckers. Take your mask off, nigga. What? What? Yeah, so what what is it about that beat that stands out to you? Um, I don't know. I guess just like the the whole mood of it overall and uh I like that. It's you know, just like the it's the quality of it, just like kind of lo-fi stuff like, you know, just kind of like what I do. The stuff that I make myself like try to sound like that kind of um but yeah, just like the overall mood, just like uh just the whole the vibe of it is like, you know, kind of like creepy and and haunting and stuff. I just always like that beat. It seems like those aren't really, I mean, Mob Deep obviously kind of mastered that sound, but ever since that hasn't really been the prevailing aesthetic in hip hop, you know, creepy or moody or lo-fi. Right, right. Um, and you actually ended up producing a track for Havoc of Mob Deep. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was kind of crazy how that happened. Like, I was sending stuff, that was like when I, f when I was first started sending stuff out online. I was sending to this guy um, that was kind of rapping with like G Unit Mob Deep at the time. His name was Nice. I don't know if you remember that guy. He was like, he was some guy. He was like from New York, and uh, he was he was kind of like you know affiliated with like Mob Deep and G Unit. And I was sending him stuff. Just kind of sending stuff to everybody. And um, I sent him that beat that Havoc ended up rapping on. But so I sent it to his manager. Then like a year and a half later. That same guy, the manager, hit me back and he's like, yo, uh, Havoc ended up rapping on that because he ended up managing Havoc down the road. So he was like, yeah, Havoc got the beat, ended up rapping on it. And it was out for a while. I had no idea. So, I mean, that was pretty cool how it worked out. It was like a, you know, a complete surprise. But I'd never like really even tried to send stuff straight to him. But how it worked out was pretty cool. Well, it seems like kind of an interesting time for, ha for the way hip-hop beats have exchanged hands and move around, whereas it's just... It's just like you said, email files that like float yeah, out in the yeah. ether. Right. Is that exciting? Is that frustrating to you know hear a beat that you don't, you know, you just make this beat and then it just kind of stops being yours? Well, what do you mean stops being mine? Like, well, I mean, you lose control over the oh yeah process. Yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of get used to it though. Like, just the whole process and you know, some bad things happen, some good things happen. So you got to just look, you know. Sometimes, yeah, like it's not in your control anymore. Once you put it out on the internet or online, you know, anything can happen with it. And, um, you know, you just try to hope, you know, hopefully something real good happens with it like that. But, um, yeah, yeah, I'm just kind of used to the process by now, of, like, you know, taking a risk. We just throwing stuff out there online and, you know, anything can happen. Does that get confusing on the legal end of things? Yeah, yeah, very easily. <laughs> Is there, are there any cases in particular where, you know, you had to chase down credits or chase down money. Um, yeah, every song that I did with Lil B, <laughs> chasing down credits. Um, yeah, I mean, every time he puts something out, you know, he never puts anybody's name on it. So I go around and do that, make sure I do that first. So that was like probably some of the hardest work of doing, just trying to get my name attached to everything that he's done and put out. And um, that's definitely one of the one of the biggest things. But I I got like into a process of doing that, and got used to that, and like following him real close every time he dropped it, 
because he wouldn't even let me know. He would he just put something out. He wouldn't be like, yo, I'm putting this out soon. Sometimes we'll put it out like six months down the road. I wouldn't even know that he's using it. So I'm always like, you know, trying to put my name on stuff and tag it so people know. Yeah, I always see like whenever a new song comes out, the first YouTube hit is on your YouTube channel and like very clearly produced by Clarence. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess maybe we should talk about Lil B a little more though for, I don't know how many people here are familiar with his work, but he's one of the more divisive and interesting hip hop artists in America right now. Maybe you could tell the people what he's all about and how you came to work with him. Um. Well, I first started listening to him when he was in the group. He was in the group called The Pack, and I first started listening to them about, like, five years ago or somewhere around there. And um, he wasn't really doing what he's doing now. Like, they're, you know, they're doing, like, straight, like, up, up-tempo, up like, real fast kind of stuff. And, um, like, kind of, like, hyphy, you know, hip-hop. And um, then he started doing stuff on his own. He was, like, you know, putting solo stuff on MySpace and... He started just doing like really crazy stuff and just like sh like all freestyles and putting out like five or six songs a day, and I I noticed that and I started you know like I I hit him up I was like w when I was sending messages to people on MySpace like yo can I send you some stuff, I sent him a few beats and like he did some freestyles on them and he was just putting out so much stuff and like really just out there like just really crazy stuff so I was just like I didn't know what to think of it at first and then I just really started getting into it because I, I used to like his the stuff they did before a lot. And then I was like, what the hell happened to him? Like, what is he, what is he doing? And then, like, I, I was like, you know, I just really got into it. And then he, he the stuff he did, um, the first stuff he did, like, I just thought it was so funny on my beats. Like, he was freestyling just, like, really ridiculous stuff. And I was just like, I, I thought it was so funny. And I just kept sending him stuff. And then just from happened from there. So that was, like, the end of, like, 08 when I first started, like, talking to him and working with him. Now, is that liberating as a producer to see somebody who's doing such like wild music did you feel like you could start doing different things production wise yeah yeah it, it like um you know made me look at stuff differently because i i didn't know what i thought of it at first so i was like well, you know it's a whole another direction well let's go into uh what i think stands as kind of your breakout production for little b um this is called i'm god you want to maybe tell us a little bit about it before we play it uh yeah it's, i mean uh there's not much background behind it like i i made it for somebody else i made it like uh, probably like a few months before i actually sent it to little b and uh i had it for a while but i never sent it to him because i just didn't think that he would like it and i never i know i didn't think he would really be into it for some reason so i had it laying around i never sent it to him and i was sending him a bunch of stuff before that and like um i just sent it to him and he like freaked out like he flipped he was like he was like yo are you crazy like what is this and i and i uh i think i sent him like a couple more the same day too and um but yeah he like really flipped out when he heard it and he recorded like a few days later and just like and he, so he loved it so here it is you know i always wanted to be the best you know i always wanted to be god This is real talk. It's Lil B. Yeah. My new name is Bass God. Ice cream paint job. Only come out in the dim lights. Vampire shouts out to AE. I'm riding in that six so Move fast, stick slow. Think fast, talk slow. Dude, try to play me. Living with his bitch broke. Sorry for the guts words. Fuck that. Curse mode, bruh, did things. Should've been in the hearse, folk. Round spin, rap shit. Get me something to live for. Hit him with the P9. Better make his ribs show. Rap game is too fake. Real niggas lay low. Word around town that you living with a halo. Bet I got killers putting cash on Halo. No Xbox shouts out to two, baby. Free two, baby. Free rock, bitch. Free rock, free rock. Feel me? Free. Yeah, right. yeah, bro, I think I'm gay cause I'm riding in my tiny pants tiny Bet I'm the only goon nigga in these tiny pants Sending off shots, kick back, make your wrist jam Fully loaded thing on my arm like a wristband You don't want a space jam, you better off the vacate No 
was no tin blade to touch this. Six kids reckless, hands around your neck like a necklace. Leave him screwed and chop, have him thinking he in Texas. Nigga says, yes. You know what I mean? The mind is so complex when you're base. 32 levels. Welcome to my world. Like I said, I've been ready. And it feels good to be here now. Finally you realize Who's the rawest rapper? Lil B Just cause you a rich rapper Don't really mean shit I come to your crib and clear that whole bitch out And then blow the switch out My mouth put the stick out I can't be high and robbing pussies with my dick out I guess I'm a show off Take my raincoat off I'm so wet that a pussy get mad at Switch cars, new colors, call it raspberry. Got my own website with the dot com. Take it out the bag, over stove like tie rhyme. I don't sell coke. My niggas look out for me. They ain't wanna let me fall off the balcony. That's like losing Mike Vick on the Falcon team. We a Falcon team, but I'm the team leader. I pass you guys, I'm in the two seater. And what's wrong with you? This is hip hop. This that old nine shit. I call it bass world. Bass world. Bass world. Bass. I said I call it bass world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just to tell you, yeah. It's a rap. To anybody that thought they had it, you need to think again. Throw your hands up. It's little beef for little bars. I need all the bass energy I can. Is this what you really want? You got me in the flesh now. No, I'm not stressed out. I'm God, I'm the best out. Rap transparent, my seat through glasses. Incoherent, and no, I'm not staring. I just see through you. And from your heartbeat, you were soft in the middle. I'm real on the outside, solid in the inside. Bitches the west side. Chop in the trunk, leave them soaked like a wet slide. It's a part-time rap game, it's my shit I'm so sick, I'm feeling so nauseous Somebody tell the earth I'm the best now Somebody tell the ocean I'm the best out Somebody tell the trees I'm here now Somebody tell the world I'm based now See me in out of space, I'm out of reach today Celebrate for me, I'm based for life This is celebration, bitch So yeah, you're probably a little too humble to say this, but this has kind of become like a subgenre defining track, right? Yeah, I guess I hope so. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about the elements that went into making that track. Um, the main thing that I like I liked was uh, just the vocal sample. Like I usually use them, and I, I didn't realize this. Like, you know, I usually. Uh, like for the past few years, I've been only doing like vocal samples. I, I don't know why. And then like I started looking at them. Like I really just like you know I like the voice, and um, I've used that song for like so many other things, and just try to see what else I could do with it. Like I've used it for different kinds of beats, and like because I usually take like one source, like I'll, I'll take a song, like a song, like a sample, make like four, three or four different beats out of it, and try to make them all sound real different, and see how you know how far I can push it in each direction. So. I usually end up making a lot of stuff I like the same as the same uh sample. And that's an emotion heap sample? Yes. What was it that drew you to her work or how'd you find that? Um actually one of my friends sent me another one of her songs. It was not that one. It was I forget the name of it. He sent me like a like an acapella of hers or something. He was like, Yo, you gotta try this, see what we could do with it and I had never heard of her. So I tried messing with the one that he sent me, and and I couldn't really do anything with it. And then I just started searching for more of her stuff. So, and that's when I found that one. I found just for now what I, I'm got a sample from. Um, after like my friend told me about her and he sent me some, I just went and looked on my own and uh, found some other stuff from her. Now here you have a kind of interesting method in finding samples. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I used to. I haven't done that in a long time, but. Uh, you mean just like searching into search engine and stuff? Like I used to 
use like um you know file sharing service like lime links or stuff like that i used to use like like bear share things like that and just type words in like any random words and um and then just whatever came up like stuff from all over the world that i wouldn't even know what it is and just to find different things like that i wouldn't normally find really just like um just to get a real variety of different stuff and just like uh you know, just kind of like a challenge, just finding new stuff that I had never heard. So I would just like just type in words and whatever came up and just try to whatever looked cool, just download it. What were some of those words? Uh, anything. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Colors, green, stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, if I see another uh, anything, really, if I see another word like in one of those results, I just search that and just keep it going. But I haven't done that in a while because... Um, I just kind of saved up so much like over the years like I just have like huge like folders and folders of like so much stuff that I haven't really even had to search for a long time so so getting back to I'm God it seems like that specific emojin heap sample has not just become like a standard in your catalog but among a lot of your peers yeah I've heard a lot of other people using it and I, I you know even before before I did, like, there's, like, some big song sample uh, that sampled her, and, like, so people were doing it before me, but, uh, like, a, it seems like a lot of people are doing it now, like, especially Lil B's producers, like, there's a lot of people using, like, that same exact song, too, for for a little B, and people think that I made them, but I don't. Do you feel like they're biting your style? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, maybe we should play the original of that? Yeah. Does that sound good? So yeah, you kind of decimated that. Yeah. Um, what kind of gear are you working with? Uh, right now, I just use software. Like, I just I used to use like a bunch, you know samplers and hardware stuff, but right now I just use a laptop. For the past like probably a couple of years, just only software and a laptop. Do you want to uh, specify as far as software? Because you're in a room full of. Oh yeah, yeah. I use uh, psyched about that stuff. Yeah, I use uh, Acid Pro, Sony Acid Pro. Now, I think one of the cool things too about Um God is that it's inspired this whole kind of YouTube tribute movement where a lot of people have been rebuilding the track on their own. Uh -huh. How do you feel about that? Um, I think it's funny. I think it actually started because um, so many people wanted it and were asking for it, but I hadn't put it out yet. And I think the that's instrumental. Yeah, the instrumental. And um, I think that's how it started because like people were talking about it for so long, and they're like, "I need this beat. I want this beat. I want to rap on it, whatever." And um, I just didn't put it out. I, I took a long. I don't know why. I don't know when I put it out. Probably like a year and a half later when it, when the original song came out. But um, I think that's how it started. And people just started making remakes and stuff. And that, there's like so many of them now on YouTube. Have you found any that come close? Yeah, some of them actually, some of them, I was surprised that some of the people like kind of flipped it in the same, you know, and actually came pretty close, but not most of them. Um, I guess we've spent a lot of time kind of in the computer in your world. Can you tell us a little bit about your day-to-day -day life and what you're doing when you're not chopping up emoji and heap samples? Uh -huh. 
lately that's all I've been doing really. I just been in the studio. So like I mean, I was, you know, I was in school and um I just finished school this spring, but uh like, you know, this whole summer and and um that's what I do now, like all day is <laughs> pretty much chopping up Zebo. So I mean that's that's like my main thing right now, what I've been what I've been up to, so what were you studying in school? Uh, physical therapy. Is that something you think you're going to pursue, or is this kind of the route now? Um, I, yeah, I was planning on doing it, but I, I don't know. It's like <laughs> I got, you know, I, w- I want to make sure I finish school and stuff. And, um, and you know, it's not like I just stop, stop going, but, like, all the stuff is, you know, music stuff is, like, working out on its own. And I was never planning to do it. But, um, you know, it's looking good now, and I'll see what happens. I'm just glad I got, you know, actually got it out of the way. You know, I, I can work, if I, you know, in physical therapy if I wanted to. And um, so we'll see what happens. I don't even know yet. Well, it seems like kind of your, the new aginess of your sound almost complements physical therapy as well. Yeah, a lot of people said that, too. I never thought about it, but I guess it's true. Um, though I guess right now is probably a good time to pursue the music thing because... Last week you had some beats on the number one album in the country in America. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah, just like like I said, it's like stuff is working out on its own and it's pretty crazy. So I just want to see you know where I can go with it. Yeah, and that would be Mac Miller's. Uh, yep. Debut album. How'd you come to work with him? Um, actually, he just he kind of just shouted me out on Twitter. He was like, "Yo, I need to work with this dude. He's got a cool sound," and then um. I guess I ended up, you know, chilling with him later, and I think how it happened was his friends, like, some of his boys had just showed him my stuff, like my mixtape or whatever, and uh, my EP or something, and he liked it a lot. So he kind of just shouted me out. He was, like, on Twitter, he sent me a message. He's like, yo, I'm going to work with you, and then, you know, he gave me his number. I just started sending him stuff, and then it took off from there. Is that weird now that the roles are kind of reversed, whereas you used to have to hustle to get people to pay attention to you on MySpace, yeah. and now artists are coming to you. Yeah, it's like exact opposite. Now it's like so many people, you know, come coming at me, and it's so much easier. And uh, yeah, thank thank God it's like that now, because it's not fun doing it the other way around. Well, let's play something from the Mac Miller record. This is called My Team. Talk shit, who the boss bitch? Moon the crowd now, Randy my shit. Shark swimming in the water, you'll get tossed in. I'm fucking first class, I'm in the cockpit. It's obnoxious, it's bumping out my car. Pace will shake your dining room table off from afar. Down the street, they can hear me pretty clearly. Making in the night with your daddy pulling nearly. See a little stale, I got mine's patent. Always rock a smell, never a distraction. Brand new Mercedes, cameras when I back it. Fuck with single ladies, yeah, I did a little acting. Let me on the weekend, but hate me when I'm working. Overly dedicated and over. Fully medicated for certain by her a brand new person that's gravy I ain't talking slim when I say these bitches shady Sandwiches and turquoise beats Had to sleep and relieve my jeans Never get no sleep, you know all about me Come and meet my team, bitch, meet my team Be my team, you know all about me Come and meet my team Bitch, meet my team, you know all about me Come and meet my team And if you see me I'll be with my team. Got my homie Billy probably in Supreme. Jimmy and Will be selling shirts to the fans while trees the clock. They got you raising your hands. Then you got Q, that's my right hand man. Shout out Lil Dave sitting shoddy in the van. Everyone I came with travel like a gang bitch. City after city, everybody speak our language. We just flex. Get Google flex checks. Got all these people asking what's next. Success in the dumb fresh life. Taking bets, we trying to lose a little money tonight. I'm on top of the stage, but under the lights, we invaded. In your crib and fucking your wife, so have a bowl, no sports, no small, then pop a champagne, gon' spray it on the awning. She can sandwich and some turquoise beans. Had to sleep and relieve my jeans. Never get no sleep, you know all about me. Come and meet my team, bitch, meet my team. Meet my team, you know all about me. Come and meet my team. Bitch, meet my team, you know all about me. Come and meet my team. Team, I ain't trying to meet yours. What happened to that shit you was talking before? Me, and my team, I ain't trying to meet yours. What happened to that shit you was talking before? Me, and my team, I ain't trying to meet yours. What happened to that shit you was talking before? Me, and my team, I ain't trying to meet yours. Goes one, two, three, four.
Now, when I talked to you a few months ago, you mentioned that you hadn't really had a chance to meet many of the artists you'd worked with. Is that changing as the career progresses? Um, yeah, yeah, it is a little bit. Because, yeah, most of the people that I was working with, I would just email and, and stuff. And um, so I never, like, got in the studio or, with them or anything. But, yeah, it's definitely changing now. It's like I'm meeting a lot more people and, you know, getting a chance to... Uh, to hang out with everybody, so it's it's cool, and I'm glad it, that it's like that now. Does that change your production at all, having that kind of access? Um, no, I wouldn't say so. I'm still doing the same thing. Like, I'll still just make stuff on my own, you know, on my own time by myself and, and send it out to them, you know. So I wouldn't say it changes, like, the whole process at, yet, at least. Now, when you're making a beat, like, you're making that, like, with my team, for example, do you have Mac Miller in mind, or is it just like a constant workflow? Um, no, I usually try not to think about, you know, who I'm, I'm going to make it for or who I would send it to, because I usually end up thinking too hard, and then nothing really, it doesn't work right. So, like, I kind of just make stuff, and whatever whatever happens, I'll just follow that idea. If I hear something, I'll, I'll go with it. But I try not to think about artists and, you know, who can who can be on top of it too much just because I feel like I, you know, it just, it just messes me up. So I try not to really think about that. About how frequently or about how many beats do you make a day or in a week or? Um, it's hard to say because I don't make them like sit down once and make them like I, I kind of just start them and then I'll like have it like a quarter done or half of it done and then I'll do something else. So I probably say I, I start like, like maybe like three a day or something like that and then i'll go back to them like put all the pieces together use some from one start so I, it's kind of hard to explain now but i say i probably start about like three every time i sit down i probably start like the beginning of like three beats but not finished ones i usually don't it takes me a real long time to finish it though yeah you kind of blew my mind a few minutes ago when you told me about the origins of this next record we're going to play by ASAP Rocky. Oh, yeah. Can you maybe break down that process for the crowd? Um, well, like this, the, this one we're talking about is is actually the same sample as uh, I'm God from uh, Imogen. I don't know how to say it, Imogen Heap. Uh, it's, the same, it's the same sample. Um, but I just, like he said, I flipped it in other ways. One of the ones that I probably made, I don't know how many beats I made with this, with that song, but this is one of them that sounds a lot different from I'm God, and it's pretty hard to probably even tell what it is, but this is the same sample. Well, it also, you had said that it, you kind of broke it off of a rejected piece of a remix to the little B song. Oh, yeah, that's what you're talking about. All right. Yeah, um, this, this beat for Rocky, called Bass, um, it was actually like something I sent to Little B, and he was like, "Oh, it's too fast." He he liked like half of it, but then it like switched up in the middle, and it got like real fast. And he was like, oh, "I I can't I can't use that." So he he hit me back. He's like, "Yo, just slow it all down." So I took off the fast part. I kept the part that he liked. I made the rest of it slower to match it, and then that became "I'm the Devil," which is a Little B song. Yeah, that that he recorded called "I'm the Devil." So he told me to get rid of the fast part. So then like this is this beat is pretty much just the fast part of that beat but then i slowed it down again because rocky likes everything <laughs> real slow so i just kind of took that whole beat and just and just made it real slow and and this that's how that happened well, let's check out bass by asap rocky These other niggas so so, they open up my mojo. Spanish Sophie with a half a kilo by her Jojo. Blow it out your culo. Who got dough on the smoke though? My partner has Cinco. Now we blowing on that Ocho. Bozos love my rose gold. Purple got me slow mo. Something like I'm Dorothy, but my rubies in my gold though. What you think this fofo? These niggas must be loco. Stepping on these bricks and for your fix, so call me Toto. Follow me, follow me, follow me now. Cadillac, with a diamond in the back, got the bitch and she back, worth about a hundred tax, 
of my goons on deck And we got a hundred stack What you know about that? Got me swaggin' to the max Everybody know what got the shit in bag is just a match Uh, better come correct Fuck with the bases is Gold grills like the set of new braces Why they comin' on my set though? They lickin' cause my neck go Then I let that tech show Hear that echo, let go, that meadow, be it special, do your threshold. Niggas acting petro, like it's extra, what's metro? A bunch of bad bitches, fucking out on tour. Like it through the back door, give it to her raw. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all, ODB, ODB, fucking other niggas' bras, OPP, OPP. Coming down, starting like a bitch, bitches on my dick, on the set, and they like the nigga team and sick of bread. How they feeling for a nigga, got these hoes up on my sack. Tell me where that bass said. Bass on, 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 bass, 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 bass. Yeah. Nigga, ASAP. Where that bass? Where that bass? Clans. Harlem. Yeah. Where that bass? Trill shit. Trill shit from a trill nigga. All my purple people. I be that pretty motherfucker. Now, ASAP Rocky is another kind of hotly pursued rapper at the moment. Yep. How'd you end up working with him? Um, I actually found some of his stuff online. Like, uh, some he had, like, some songs up on YouTube. Not, like, videos. Just, like, some songs of his, like... Um, and I think he had, like, one video. So I saw on, on his one of his boys' websites that I, I check a lot. So... I saw that on there, and uh, I started checking out his videos. Like, he had one video and a bunch of songs on YouTube. Like, a few of them, actually, not too many. And um, I was like, I just want to send him some stuff. This is, like, in April, I think, of this year. So I hit up, uh, you know, the, the guy that runs a website that I that I saw, and I was like, yo, you know how I can get, touch, get in touch with Rocky? Because I couldn't find out any way to, to hit him up. Like, he didn't have a Twitter or anything, or, and that's what I would usually use. So... He was like, yeah, he gave me his email. He's like, that's crazy. We were just talking about your your instrumental tape last night. So they're, you know, they're friends, and I didn't know that. And they're, they said they were, like, talking about my tape. So I was like, oh, cool. So I sent him some stuff, and I sent him, like, four, three or four beats. I told him who I was. I was like, yo, I want to see if you want to work on some stuff. Um, and he, like, hit me right back, and he was like, yo, uh, you're like my favorite producer right now. He's like, I already recorded stuff on your beats. Like he already had stuff done from like my instrumental tape, like recorded already. He hit me right back and he was like, he, like the, his song Demons, he had already recorded that before I ever hit him up. And um, so he sent that right back to me. I was like, oh shit, I liked it. And I sent him a bunch, I just keep sending him stuff from there. So the first the first thing he, he recorded was What's Up? And I, I really liked that. So I just kept hitting him with a lot of stuff. You've done some shows with Rocky since, right? Yeah, I did uh, two with him pretty recently, like in uh, last month. What's that like hearing your music kind of in a live setting? It's cool. I, I mean, it's fun. It's different. Like I've done some stuff on myself and and like a, a few shows with him, but it's cool. It's different. I, I like it. I, I had fun. Now, at the, at the same time, you're kind of this rising talent in the hip hop world and selling beats to rappers. You've also kind of drawn the attention of this whole other experimental world you've put out kind of vinyl only instrumental projects with type 
and triangle. Was that kind of the same situation where they just hit you up and um yeah they they just approached me because like when i put out the instrumental tape of you know of all the beats i had done for people and like it just kind of attracted a whole nother group of people that i didn't even really think would you know be interested in it. and people are saying like oh it's you know it's a whole different kind of thing it's not hip-hop it's like electronic music and stuff so it's like attracted like a whole nother crowd and like yeah like those you know those labels just hit me up like they're really into the music and stuff so i started talking to them and and i was like you know i had a bunch of stuff like that I was trying to get rappers on like sitting around so i was like i'm gonna just put some more of it out i was like i don't need rappers on it people want to listen to it without rappers so i had stuff laying around that i was trying to send out but nobody was using and then um so that became like the ep that i put out now were you aware of kind of that world of music really did you pay attention to it did it influence you uh no nah, i never really listened to it like i checked out some of the stuff like you know i, I would hear people like comparing the stuff that I do to all this other stuff, like, I would check it out. But, like, I, n before that, like, no, nah, I would I never, like, I wasn't into it or anything. But I found a lot of cool stuff since then that, that I kind of liked. But, um, no, nah, not before. Who are some of the instrumental artists that you found? Um, stuff like on Triangle, some of the art other artists, like the um, Balan Macab. He's got, like, crazy stuff. And it's, like, surprised by how much it sounds like mine. And, um, but I, like... I liked him. I like his stuff a lot. The other guys on, on the label, so that's pretty much it. It seems like the worlds of hip-hop and experimental music, at least on an underground level, are kind of merging. Like, I think if you took some of the Rocky instrumentals, like you were saying, you could they'd be yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's, the same thing you'd hear on yeah. his label. I think that's, you know, it's cool that so many different people and people that don't even really listen to hip-hop will start listening to hip-hop now because if they, you know, know me from that, like, it's funny. I saw online, like, people are like, when the when the Rocky tape came out, I I saw somebody saying like, "Oh man, Clams is working. He's working with rappers now. Like he's doing a whole like what? What are you talking about? Like what do you mean?" And they're like, "I can't believe Clams did a whole tape with a rapper, and it's awesome or something." Like they had no idea like that I even ever made hip hop and stuff. So I I thought that was funny, but it's cool that you know you can get people that are into that and don't listen to hip hop, and now you know they'll they'll check it out. Well, let's play something from one of your instrumental projects. What do you think, Gorilla? Yeah.
Now that was originally intended as an instrumental you would send to rap artists. Uh, yeah, did I? That was actually kind of half and half. I was thinking that one could go either way, cause um, actually at the same time somebody had, is even before I I put um the original mixtape instrumental mixtape out, some somebody had originally like um gave me the idea like yo would you ever think about doing an instrumental stuff so that one was kind of like half and half like i did send that to rappers but i was kind of thinking also that like it might be cool just as an instrumental and, that, and that's why that one kind of is actually more of like instead of just a beat is like kind of you know formatted like an actual song and it like evolves a lot more than like a regular hip-hop beat and stuff so that one was kind of like half i did send that to rappers i think at first i think i said that to soldier boy so <laughs> like it was the first rapper i said that to we haven't really talked about your relationship with Soldier Boy. Yeah. How did that come to pass and what came of that? Um, the, Lil B sent him, I think he said that he liked the I'm God beat a lot. And he like, Lil B hit me. He was like, yo, Soldier loves it. I, w- I was trying to send him stuff because I, I, I noticed that they started working. They started working a lot. And I was like, yo, I'm trying to get some stuff to Soldier. And he was like, all right. He was like, yeah, definitely. He's like, he, he likes I'm God a lot. So I was like, cool. I sent. I sent like stuff to B and he would shoot over to him and um he didn't end up doing anything like he he did rap on I'm God first that was the first thing I ever did with him he just did like a freestyle on that beat and then like um I never really talked to him then like a year later like Lil B hit me up again he was like yo soldier wants some sample beats and stuff so I sent him like three that was one of them I sent him that I sent him the one that became um all I need and the world needs change and and that one, the gorilla. So I sent him like those three. He ended up using two of them. And then he wanted to do a whole mixtape. He's like, yo, I want to do a whole tape with you, like you know, with uh, stuff like this, like all samples. It never happened, but I just kept sending him stuff. So we did, we did end up doing like a lot of songs, but never put like a whole tape out. It seems like Soldier's in a weird point in his career where he kind of wants to be like a more adventurous and experimental yeah. artist. Yeah, I mean, I think it's cool. He he tries a lot of things like. He he does like a lot of different things. He experiments, so I, I think that's that's cool of him to do that. And I think you know most people should do that, um, but I, I, that's what I like about him the most. That he you know he'll really you know he he does try a lot of different stuff, so that's cool. And you like people would never expect to, him to rap on stuff like that. I sent him, but he wanted stuff like that, and and he did and he used it. So, do you have any of those soldier tracks? I don't have them on me, but um, I don't think so. Okay, well. Actually, yeah, I might have it on my iPad. I could check real yeah, fast. Yeah, check real quick. If you hope you guys don't mind. I'm just gonna play a little more from the uh, Rainforest EP. Well, yeah, I got one on here. Yeah, I think I got I got some of them. I got all I need. Oh, let me see. Hold on a Let's play play something else. Mm. Uh, let me try to find it.
www.drakethedeveloper.com Log on Read my story See my pictures I never got into the music industry to sell albums That never was my intention I just like to make music That's all I do Okay I said as I away from my dreams Let's make this cream Another day, another dollar Word to my OG People saying slow down Soldier before your D I know what they mean I know exactly why a couple dudes hating on me Want to live my life and have me hate on them But I can't do that Cause them dudes can't swim Brush my teeth, wash my face And let's count this paper Yesterday it was the G6 Today is the scraper um, Salute to the real No love to the fakers Everybody in the world Follow me, be great I changed my whole life around Just to get this paper uh, Seven mil in one year I'm working on eight And you can thank me later That's worth the drape Because right now It's a lot of smoke in the air But when the smoke clears I'll be standing here Like I told you so I got the glory Dreadedeveloper.com Gonna read my story yeah. Feel this. It's like, it's like, it's like verse after verse, song after song, puff after puff coming out of my wee bone. Only people with emotions are to feel these songs. Go ahead and grab you something, roll your weed up on. I admit I came far and I'ma keep going. My concert sold out, my fans keep on showing. Just like a river with the cash, I keep flowing. I used to be very friendly, now I'm anti-social. Now I just keep to myself and stay on top of my health and definitely stay up on top of my wealth. These days, these haters can't see me, I'm on top of my stuff. Tomorrow never dies, and soldier boy never lies. Got both eyes on the prize. Now, bitch, I got all three eyes on the prize. So. Yeah, so Soldier has a line kind of opening up that record where he says, I never got into the music industry to make music, or to make money. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, that seems kind of like the prevailing ethos for a lot of you guys in your circle. Is that safe to say? Yeah, definitely. Like, um, especially like me, you know, I never, I never thought about that. And, and the guys like that I work with a lot, like Main Attractions, like they I've been working with them for a while and they just like they just make music like to make music like they've been I've been working with them for like 3 years and they put out so much stuff like I can't even keep up with them and they up until very recently have like not really made anything off of it so like they just really love to do it and I like working with guys that that um you know think like that With that in mind what are you working on now what's in the pipeline Man a lot a lot I can't even really keep up with it, but there's a lot right now, and um, I hate to ruin the surprise. Like there's a lot of big stuff going on, but I don't really want. I don't even know what I could talk about. Can, can you give us one one name? Mm. <laughs> so, well, all right. Uh, I guess we can open. <laughs> I guess we can it. open the floor up to some questions. Mike's coming around. Hey, man. Hey. Uh, your EP on Triangle got a lot of praise, and I was wondering if you see yourself working more on your, I don't want to say instrumental, because maybe you want to put some vocals on it and work with someone, but, I mean, working more on, more on your solo stuff, your Clans Casino stuff in the future. Will I be working on more solo stuff, like instrumental? Yeah, I don't want to say instrumental because, I mean, you can always, you know, collaborate. Yeah. But, I mean, not making, just producing beats for rappers so much in the future. Yeah, I, d I definitely see, you know, myself doing um, more solo stuff down the road. Like, I feel like there's a lot of that out right now. And I, I'm just like, right now I'm going back to working with artists for a little bit. But I'm sure, like, you know, I like to switch things up a lot and I get, you know, 
bored fest. So like I'm sure when I'm ready, I'll be doing like a lot more instrumental stuff. So yeah, I'm definitely into it. I like it, and um, so I'll I'll be doing that too. All right, and just one more. Uh, it seems to me I don't know if you do that anymore. That if you still do that too much, but uh, you used to like if someone put one of your beats on YouTube, you usually went there and dropped a comment saying, "Hey, I made this beat, thanks." Uh, and uh, I think that's kind of unusual because producers, as soon as they get generate some buzz, they usually stop, you know, interacting so much online. And I was wondering why you do that. Why why you think that's important? Um, of First, uh, I gotta say there, like, there's a YouTube channel that had posts up all my stuff and has like pictures of me, but it's not me. So, I don't know. If that's the one you're talking about. But uh, like, I don't think so because I, I think I actually saw uh, read an interview where you mentioned that you. Okay. Do that oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I do that. I mean, just so just because if stuff's not labeled, like I, I've been used to doing that for so long, like people don't give credit, like producers, you know credits on when they put stuff out online like so i just got used to doing that like every time some somebody would put a song out i just go around and post it up everywhere as much as i could to just so people would know that but um yeah i mean i still do it if it's if it's not there i'll still do it but now it's like people are putting my name on it more without you know i won't have to ask them or anything so i won't have to do it as much but if it's not there yeah i still do stuff like that thanks thank you Hey, I got a couple questions for you. Um, one, uh, you guys were talking earlier about how, you know, once you send your beats out uh, through emails and stuff, it kind of gets out of your hand at that point. Do you ever, um, does a song ever come back to you, like from an MC or whatever, and you hear it and you're just like cringe at it? Does that Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it has. I can't think of it. You don't, you don't need to like give me any names or yeah, anything. Yeah. I'm just like, curious. yeah. No, I'm, I'm trying to think of like specific times. Like, yeah, I'm sure it has. I, I don't know. Some, cause sometimes like I just, you know, if it's like somebody that I don't like or, you know, I wouldn't really send them beats like in the first place. So, it's you know, it's rare like somebody that I, I like and will reach out to. And that, you know, that they won't do something that I like on top of it. So, yeah, most of the time, no, but I'm sure it has, though. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, one more question, too. Um, if you could if you could pick one MC just all time to work with, who would it be? That's tough. I, I say Or group. Group. I think um, Cameron. Good choice. Yeah. Maybe we should play uh, Killer Cam because you had mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. It's a big influence. Yeah, it's an, uh, another one of my favorite songs, like, and the production that I really like um, from the Heat Makers. And this is off uh, Cameron CD, Purple Haze. Clap. Sing. 
It's me. Clap. Say. Clap. It's me. Clap. Harlem. I know y'all know about this. Yo. I'm from where Nicky Barnes got rich as fuck. Rich and they hit the kitchens, then we're pitching up. Rob Bass, Mace, Dougie Fresh, switched it up. I do both, who am I to fuck tradition up? So I parked in a toy zone, chrome. I don't care, that car throwaway home. Welcome to Harlem, where you welcome the problems. Off a furlough, fella, felons get partners. Them niggas knew we bang, stood out like booty tang. Soon as a stoolie sang, that's when the toolie sang. Bang, bang, came from that movie ring. Snap, track, jewelry, bling. Flat, jack, hoodie, bring. Clack, clack, hoodie, ring. Bad rap, cuties, playing Ass cap, put them in the river. I'm the sushi king. And I'ma keep you fresh, like the fish eat your flesh. Yes, sir, please confess. Just say he's the best. Sing. Clap. It's me, sing, sing, clap, yes, sir. What you want, coke or piff? Got it all, smoke a sniff. And you know my drift, used to figures doing shit. You a rooster, nigga, just a roaster, bitch. And I roast your bitch, that's how I usually end. Tell her and her groupie friends, go get their Gucci cleanse. We the Moody, Gucci, Louie, and Poochie men. A scout of Prada, the chopper, got the Uzi lens. Birds I view, the birds I knew. Flip birds, bird things, it was birds I flew. And word I blew, or herb I grew. I would serve on stoops, now swerving coops, it's me, sing, kill Alright, so you're here. Purple Haze, the album. I don't know if we have to listen to Cameron <laughs> skits. <laughs> but yeah, it seems like you can kind of hear Heatmakers doing that multi-tiered vocal sample thing there. Yeah, that was one of the, like one of my favorite probably hip-hop productions ever, so. All right, do we have any other questions? Hey. Um, hey. You mentioned that um, you sort of don't you don't make beats with rappers in mind, but you just sort of send stuff out to people. Have you had the situation before where you sent something to lots of people and lots of them have come back and said, "Yeah, I want to do this." Yeah, that happens all the time. And how do you decide? Oh, uh, usually, like, uh, usually people don't mind. Like, the, you know, people just put out stuff for free all the time online now. It's like, and there'll be so many songs out with the same beat, and. Uh, s Sometimes it's a problem, but usually, like, if now if it's like you know if it's gonna go on somebody's CD or something, then it's like you know obviously a bigger deal because only one person can really have it. But um, yeah, I mean, there hasn't been like t too many times where people get like mad or anything about it. Like, oh, you sent it to him too. You sent it to him too because I, I send so much stuff out at once, and usually people don't even respond at all. So it's like, well, I'm not gonna sit around and, like wait for somebody like for like you know two months or something not answer or say they're gonna do it if they don't do it i'll send it to somebody else so like um i, I send stuff all over the place and you know usually it happens because people people like don't use it fast enough and i'm just like all right well i'll send it to somebody else so it does happen a lot it'll be like two you know two or three people on the same beat thanks <laughs> Hello. Um, I was just curious at what point you picked up management and how it changed, you know, your workflow and your creativity and because you that feels like you've hustled really hard just to get shit to people, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't really um, I, like earlier this year. It kind of just like happened. I put the tape out. I put the instrument out the tape out in March, and then I started talking to some people, like you know, some people from like label, record labels and stuff would hit me up, like you know, send me some music and. So I started talking to some of those people, and then like I just met people through there, and 
um, like I, I met this one guy from Warner Brothers. He was like, yo, you want to send some music? So I, I was sending him stuff and he was like, you know, you have nobody managing you. He's like, I, I have a guy that, you know, might be able to help you out. So I started talking to some people and like, you know, just like, let's see how it works. You help me out a little bit. And it wasn't like, you know, official thing. Like if it works good for both of us and like down the road, we can make it official. So, um, yeah, I started like having like people help me like er like early this year, like around the spring. And, and um, it has helped a lot to actually, you know, um, you know, like a little bit of direction and stuff and kind of organize everything. So I'm glad it happened like that. And um, but, yeah, I worked hard just, you know, just like doing online stuff and the Internet stuff by myself for like a real long time. And until like somebody came along and, and helped me out. But, you know, it's definitely like a lot of good uh, guidance and stuff now. What's going on, bro? How you doing? Um, you work with a lot of rappers in the past couple of years. Uh -huh. I just wanted to know if there were any vocalists or singers that you, because you use a lot of vocal sampling, yeah. but you haven't really worked with any singers. I just want to know if you had any interest in that. Yeah, I definitely would. Like, um, that's definitely something I want to do soon. And uh, I got something coming out soon that you guys will hear soon. I can't really talk about it yet, but... <laughs> Uh, secrets of Glen Casino. See, see a lot of secret stuff in the works, but yeah, you're gonna definitely hear some of that soon. So you know, um, it's something I'm interested in, and a lot of my stuff is like, I think perfect for singers to actually put melodies on and stuff and instead of just rapping. So I, that's something I, I did want to do for a while. So I have some stuff coming out like that, and hopefully a lot more of it in the future. But yeah, just look out for that. There's a lot of good stuff coming. Oh. Hi. Hey. Um, I'm curious if Imogen Heap has uh, reached out to you <laughs> about anything or... No. Nah. <laughs> no, nah, she hasn't yet. <laughs> would oh. you... Would about, you uh, about anything like, like legal stuff or... <laughs> I mean that or even just like, hey, I like, I liked how you uh, ripped apart my vocals and stuff. <laughs> uh, no, nah, she hasn't said anything. Uh, hopefully, um, hopefully she'll say something. I mean, I haven't even tried to actually like, you know, reach out to her, but I... Um, no, nah, she hasn't said anything, but I'd like to hear what she thinks about it, definitely. Yeah, I mean... It would be cool to hear what she has to say. <laughs> especially that there's a whole scene of people sampling, like, this one yeah. song of hers. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, like, interesting to see what she had to say about it. So, yeah, I hope I can get in touch with her, with her sometime. Put your manager on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you uh, ever had people make comparisons with the... Uh, British shoegaze bands. Are you familiar with this? The, the late 1980s, early 90s um, um, bands like My Bloody Valentine and Slow Dive. I've heard, yeah, I've heard some people say like shoegaze. I've heard people say that. I don't really know what it is or what bands they are. I know My Bloody Valentine. I know some stuff by them, but um, yeah, I've definitely heard people say that. I just don't know much of the actual music, so. Yeah, I mean, I there's, there's so many elements, you know, there's there's the drones, the use of kind of long drones and sweet vocals against quite intense or overpowering yeah. sound. And um, yeah, I just wondered if you had actually listened to any of it because I mean, it's, it seems like that's something you could sample. Yeah, no, um, yeah, like a lot of people said that to me. Like I said, I haven't, I got to check out the music because it sounds like probably something that I would, I would definitely like. But um, no, I'm just not familiar with the bands and stuff. I, yeah, I've heard the, like the term and people say, oh, it's like shoegaze, like uh, they say it all the time, but... I wouldn't really know what they meant. Yeah. And also, I mean, you seem like a pretty easygoing kind of guy, and yet there's this <laughs> emotional intensity <laughs> in this music. I mean, um, do you find it's uh, an outlet for for feelings? Um, for yeah, I guess. I mean, well, I'm not like, usually when I go, when I'm making stuff, like, I'm just hanging out, like, I'm relaxed, you know, like, I'm not like making like stuff. I guess my feelings come out in, the, in there. I don't really know. Like, I'm not like angry, like, you know, making like crazy songs and stuff i'm usually just like just like chilling like like you know that's how i i make the most stuff so i, I guess i don't i don't know it's, it's really hard to explain that you're not a troubled artist like marilyn no Manson no hip -hop. <laughs> <laughs> no definitely not that hi um, just wondering if you've had any copyright um, issues 
thus far and and whether that's something that that is a concern to you like using samples and vocal samples especially which are more obvious i suppose than taking a drum sample or something like that yeah um yeah it's it's kind of tough and i actually like all this stuff i've been making for the past few months because of that is like i kind of like trying to recreate the sound that i usually do without samples like copyrighted samples so I, it like took me a while to um to get used to it but now i'm like kind of getting like in a good like groove of like um kind of taking other stuff and and really making it sound like that so um yeah it's definitely an issue and it's you know it's it sucks because sometimes you can't put stuff out you know that you want and um so that's why i'm trying i'm just really trying to like recreate the stuff and make it sound like i usually do and it like it took me a while to to get used to it but now like i think i found like found out how to do it so i'm excited about that and i don't have to you know no worries now about any of the copyright stuff. Thank you. Thank you. What's up, man? Hey. Hey, where does your name come from, Clams Casino? Oh, uh, man, it doesn't mean anything, honestly. <laughs> it's like I just I just uh, kept it because it was catchy and easy to remember. That, like, it really doesn't, has no, like, story to it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do people call you clams frequently? Yeah, now they do. <laughs> Some like people that I just meet like, you know, recently yeah, the other like though they don't know my real name and just call me clams. I don't mind. Whatever. Okay. Whatever, you know, you wanna call me. Cool. Do we have any more questions? All right. I guess we could leave you guys with one more track. What do you think? Yeah, this is um, track ASAP Rocky featuring main attractions. Uh, it's called Leaf. You know, um, you know, I look at the crowd and, you know, I look at my fans, look at their faces, their expressions. And I know that damn well we are some partying motherfuckers. I'm tired of these rappers, I'm tired of these jackers, I'm tired of these dentists by these fucking backpackers. Said I'm sick of all these hipsters, I'm sick of phony niggas, I'm sticking to these bitches cause I'm sick of all these sisters. I'm sick and tired of trying to survive, I'm sick and tired of my environment, I'm sick and tired of feeling the problem, one of a kind, when am I climbing? Sick and tired of your facade and all of your lying and your diamonds. Basically, I'm tired of feeling sick and tired. ASAP, going and money making me. Manhattan. Every nigga on my block wanna be a main attraction. Shout my nigga Squatter, shout my nigga Madre. If you disrespect them niggas, then I'm polishing the Nadre. And I'm coming to your casa for your Madre and your Padre. Caprende, most of these niggas been gay or they strong J. They say I sound like Andre mixed with Kanye. Little bit of Max, a little bit of Wiz, a little bit of that, and a little bit of this. Get off my dick, dick, dick. Yo, boy. Got no ticket. I'm a down to earth nigga. We can kick it. Take a hit with me, with me, with me. Uh, take a hit with me, hit with me. Uh, ain't on stage behind the scenes. I'm probably mixing lean. Chilling with my niggas, with my team. Come and take a sip with me, sip with me. Yeah, take a sip with me, sip with me. Once again, Mr. Back selling crack. It's an honor keeping real nigga music on the map. Street raps, new face, sampling with no craze. Doubt myself, cause I don't think the world can relate. To my surprise, everyone does so half fake. Half of the other side don't live it, they push play. The young ill is alive, Harlem world to the bay. It feels good waking up the money in the bank. Cause last year it was shoebox and lit. I only write raps just to give you niggas hits Every verse a gift as you smoke like a chimney My album coming November, that's 20 years of memory And that's assuming I'ma live that long If I don't, don't cry cause I ain't live that wrong Just an artist in the purest form, I live that song An artist in the purest form, I live that song Bam, bing. I'm in your hood I'm a down to earth nigga, we can kick it. Take a hit with me, with me, with me. Uh, take a hit with me, hit with me. Uh, ain't no 
stage behind the scenes. I'm probably mixing lean. Chilling with my niggas, with my team. Come and take a sip with me. With me. Yeah. Take a sip with me. Sip with me. Yeah. Hey. Why fuss? I'd rather fuck. Treat her like my enemy. I just wanna bust. Seven dose, waiting on the bus. Be for them boys, been the corner, trying to make a bus. Tryouts, I'm trying to make the bus. Purple in that green got me on stuck. So I two step, move my feet and keep it pushed. Always bouncing back, gotta keep the cushion. And that's some fat, like eating all the put. ASAP, we got a slap, bruh, good look, fuck that, ASAP, where I come from, 456, Ice City Slums, weed in my pocket, coke in his tongues, buying swisher sweets, no more honey buns, fresh white tea, bright like the sun, only nigga around here rocking Michigan. I blew your hood, you ain't got no ticket. I'm a down to earth nigga, we can kick it. Take a hit with me, with me, with me. Uh, take a hit with me, hit with me. Uh, ain't no stage behind the scenes. I'm probably mixing lean, chilling with my niggas, with my team. Come and take a sip with me, with me. Yeah, take a sip with me, sip with me. Yeah, trade yeah. up. It's going to all rappers. Let's go to my little dog, the little kids running around in the schoolyards. I love you. Keep it good. Keep it good, kids. Because you know I love you. I'm always loving What's going on with that vocal sample at the end? Uh, I actually didn't put that in. I was like, Rocky's like engineer put that that ODB sample. I saw the, like the intro and the stuff in the end. Like I, I actually I didn't send it to him like that. They put that on. So I don't know, but it's pretty cool. Well, I guess everybody give a round of applause for Clams Casino. All right, thank you for having me. Thank you.